Jade Eve, uh, a car jog is Garamayogov, our son and Kuru and Shah. I very much welcome the opportunity to speak here at the McGill Summer School this evening. It is a privilege to do so, and I thank the organisers for the invitation. The theme, a visionary national development plan, the most fitting monument to 1916, invites us to collectively confront the many challenges facing modern Ireland, and to do so by driving a national policy programme which shapes our long-term political, social, economic and cultural direction of travel, a roadmap for 21st century Ireland. As a proud Donegal and Ulster man and a Republican TD, you can imagine I have much to say on the type of Ireland I want to see for the future, both as an island and as a nation. The theme this evening is fitting during this decade of centenaries. Those who we remember during this period were indeed visionaries. And any national development plan must indeed be visionary in its approach as well. During this very important decade of centenaries, important space continues to be carved out and brave initiatives taken which allows all of us from each tradition and culture, whether of an Irish or British identity, to develop a deeper understanding of each other and those key events which shaped our history from 1912 to 1922. The historic events of that period still have real effect on contemporary Ireland, not least in terms of the century-long partition that exists and the subsequent division and political conflict this generated over many decades. Thankfully, we have emerged from those painful decades of political conflict. However, our country remains deeply affected from the legacy of our past. Post-conflict peacebuilding, democracy and recovery efforts are essential to achieving a just and lasting peace. We may never come to agree a shared narrative of the past, but we must share and build a new future together. The Good Friday Agreement agreed at the multi-party negotiations in the North and by both the Irish and British governments on 10th of April 1998 and overwhelmingly endorsed through referenda North and South in May 1998 is the bedrock of the peace process. It must be safeguarded and fully implemented along with the other subsequent agreements. It is unacceptable for any party to game play with the peace process in order to point score against another or to try to win any short-term or short-sighted election benefit. The agreement belongs to the people of this island, not any political party. The Good Friday Agreement states that it is for the people of Ireland alone, by agreement between the two parts respectively, and without external impediment, to exercise their right of self-determination on the basis of consent, freely and concurrently given, north and south, to bring about a united Ireland, accepting that this right must be achieved and exercised with and subject to the agreement and consent of a majority of the people of the north of Ireland. As an Irish Republican and a Sinn Féin TD, I consider it to be my task and responsibility to actively work with others to unite communities and build a modern nation and persuade our unionist neighbours and every other citizen of the merits of a united Ireland and achieve the right of self-determination on the basis of consent. Not for the sake of it, but because it is how we will strengthen our democratic future as a society. We want a country which embraces those of a unionist persuasion and to be defined by new friendships, human dignity and a common purpose for this to be both the starting point and the cornerstone of any new Ireland and of a real republic where citizens' democratic and constitutional rights and safeguards are in fact realised 
as envisaged in the proclamation of 1916. I believe it is the duty of the Irish government to promote all Ireland policies and strategies, benefiting all parts of the island, not only this state. I want an Irish government who will actively seek to persuade unionists through dialogue of the advantages of unification for all the people who share this island in all of their diversity. An Irish government who will prepare politically, economically, socially and culturally for Irish unification, identifying the necessary steps and measures, including a green paper, which can assist a successful transition to reunification. These are the exact things that Sinn Féin would do in government to achieve real change and a new political and economic dispensation. I believe that the theme, a visionary national development plan, the most fitting monument to 1916, requires a government with courage who will be sovereign, act in the interests of citizens first and not EU elites who will refuse to limit their policies to a short list of window dressing, false promises which negatively impact and assault working people and communities through relentless austerity policies of stealth taxes, cuts to public services, cuts that are devastating the social fabric of Irish society, both urban and rural. Ultimately, the Fianna Fáil Green Party government's recklessness led to a fundamental breakdown of trust in Irish politics and the political system. The National Development Plan, thought up in the government of which Micheál Martin was a part, was ultimately short-sighted in its vision. It lacked real vision in terms of rural development, cross-border cooperation and development and in helping to deliver for the needs of citizens across the island. This short-sightedness short has only been compounded by the present Fine Gael Labour government. In 2011, the Irish people believed they were voting for something different, but got more of the same. We need a government who actually stands for something, and who will stand up for Ireland, putting the interests of the citizens first, rather than the bankers and the golden elites. What the Irish people deserve is a government who are anchored by core values which chime with the reality of people in the real world. We need a government that stands for peace, social equality, economic prosperity and Irish unity. These are Sinn Féin's core values to which we are deeply committed. Sinn Féin wants to deliver a society where citizens' political, economic and cultural rights are realised. Universal, universal, accessible and sustainable public services and infrastructure. Post-conflict peace building, reconciliation, nation building and Irish unity. Democratisation of our public institutions, political system and society. A strong competitive economy and a model of fair and progressive taxation where everyone pays their fair share. Well managed and stable public finances, and an effective regulated banking system. That means that in government, Sinn Féin will abolish water charges. We will scrap the property tax. We will introduce a wealth tax. We will bring in a third rate of income tax for those individuals earning over €100,000. That's seven, th seven cents on every euro over €100,000. And Sinn Féin will take a further 200,000 people out of universal social charge. We will deliver on rural development. We will deliver on all Ireland projects and continue to make real progress in the Assembly rather than merely paying lip service to the North while resorting to party political attacks in the Dáil Chamber like some up here on this uh, platform would prefer to do. We believe that a fair recovery is possible which must be built on real investment in real jobs. Foreign direct investment is an important part of the economic mix for the island of Ireland, but our SME sector is the greatest source of future job growth. The economic crisis and austerity policies of Fine Gael 
Labour and Fianna Fáil before them have forced half a million of our people to leave. Emigration has been used as an economic valve which has turned on and off. This has been disastrous and there's very few counties that know more about that than here in Donegal. Another generation of our young people driven to work in places like Australia, Canada, America, Britain rather than here beside their families. T.K. Whitaker was without doubt a skilled and visionary public servant and economist who played a critical role with Sean Lamas in the new economic planning model adopted by Ireland post-World War. He was born in 1916 and is certainly an Irish patriot in his own right. He understood the emerging realities confronting Ireland going forward in the 1950s, which was at the time suffering massive unemployment, economic stagnation, forced immigration and obvious low living standards. A problem solver, he recognised the decline of protectionism and growing economic cooperation as a free trade and therefore steered the economy from further economic stagnation through his programme for economic expansion in 1958. However, 50 years later, and by no fault of Mr Whitaker, the Irish economy collapsed rather than consolidated under the stewardship of the Fianna Fáil Green Party government, including Micheál Martin. Through a conservative and neoliberal policy of relentless austerity, Fine Gael, supported by the Labour Party, are taking the state, yes, to a post-crisis situation, but it's a two-tier recovery, which serves the one section of society over and over. Because Labour have abandoned their promised social democratic model and core values, which should anchor their approach, they are failing to rebuild the economy on the basis of a progressive, fair or sustainable social economic model. At this critical juncture, an alternative is now required. If we are intent on devising a visionary plan, which is based on economic reality and sound policies as a fitting monument to 1916. We need new economic thinking, new ideas and an honest and coherent political approach. An integrated and sustainable policy plan based on core Republican values and guiding principles can deliver this as a fitting monument to 1916. This means a truly visionary de development plan and democratic programme for a new Ireland. This means a new political leadership. And this means a Sinn Féin-led government.